Welcome to our brief introduction to If I Had a Million. This 1932 movie features a group of wealthy individuals who decide to give a million dollars to random people. Sounds interesting, right? Well, hold on, because there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts coming up. So keep watching this video. Now, let's talk about the actors. Which classic Hollywood actor in this movie was your favorite? With a star-studded cast, including Gary Cooper, Charles Lawton, and W.C. Fields, there's plenty to choose from. Do you have a cherished memory associated with this movie? Maybe it's a family tradition to watch it every year or a special moment you shared with someone while watching it. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie with us. So, get ready for a roller coaster ride of emotions with If I Had a Million, and don't forget to share your thoughts with us. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? If I Had a Million, released in 1932 by Paramount, is a groundbreaking film of the early sound era. Directed by seven filmmakers, including Ernst Lubitsch and James Cruz, it boasts an all star cast and features eight separate stories. The central character, John Glidden, a wealthy elderly man portrayed by Richard Bennett, decides to leave his fortune to strangers randomly chosen from a telephone directory rather than his own family. His first pick turns out to be John D. Rockefeller, a twist that prompts reflection on contemporary parallels, perhaps envisioning Bill Gates in a modern remake. Each beneficiary's story unfolds, showcasing the diverse desires and actions of ordinary people when faced with sudden wealth. Like many episodic films, some segments shine while others may falter, but collectively they paint a vivid picture of human nature and the allure of financial abundance. This film stands out as the epitome of episodic storytelling. Paramount's top stars of the time, including Gary Cooper, Charles Lawton, Charlie Ruggles, and George Raft, grace the screen with their presence. Each star takes on short, one or two real stories exploring the tantalizing premise. What if a tycoon bestowed a million dollars upon a random individual from the phone book? The resulting tales range from comedic to poignant, from humorous interludes featuring Lawton and W.C. Fields to more introspective narratives. Fields' contribution to the film not only revitalized his career, but also marked the beginning of his premium sound era, culminating in another memorable appearance in the 1942 episodic film Tales of Manhattan. It's regrettable that certain film archives like Universal Pictures Video have kept gems like If I Had a Million Locked Away, depriving audiences of cinematic treasures ripe for rediscovery. Yet, hope remains that these invaluable works will eventually see the light of day, much like Tales of Manhattan, thanks to studios like Fox Video recognizing the value of their heritage. The enduring appeal of If I Had a Million lies in its timeless exploration of human nature and the eternal question of what one would do with sudden wealth, a question as relevant today as it was in 1932. In the movie, Debbie Seafields, who lived with Carlotta Monty for 14 years, showcased his comedic talent. Gary Cooper, originally planned to star in High Time, endured four hernia operations between 1951 and 1953. Despite health challenges, his acting prowess remained undeniable. These actors brought unique elements to the film, contributing to its overall charm and appeal. In the movie, Jack Oakey's performance stood out. It's been often stated that he and Charles Chaplin never spoke after filming The Great Dictator because Chaplin was upset that Oakey stole the picture away from him, receiving an Oscar nomination. Gary Cooper was another notable presence in the cast. At the time of his terminal cancer being diagnosed towards the end of 1960, he had signed to star in The Sundowners and Ride the High Country. Mary Bolan, a familiar face from the 30s to the 50s, had her biography featured in Actresses of a Certain Character by Axel Nissenator. These actors brought depth and skill to their roles, contributing to the film's lasting impact. In the film, Jack Oakey plays a character who is the stepbrother-in-law of June Horn and James Horn Jr. Gary Cooper, known for his roles in several notable films, starred in two movies based on novels by Ernest Hemingway. These movies are a farewell to arms, and for whom the bell tolls. Richard Bennett, another actor in the movie, was the maternal grandfather of Morton Downey Jr. In the hustle and bustle of 1929 Hollywood, he shared a home with another actor, Anderson Lawler, at Paramount Studios. It was a time of big dreams and glamorous movie stars, and he was right in the middle of it. He grew up in Montana, where his dad was a judge on a ranch. But he also went to a fancy school in England, so he had a mix of rugged American and refined British influences. 
He lived a life full of adventure and fame, and in 1966, he was honored by being put into the Hall of Great Western Performers at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. His name will always be remembered as a symbol of brave heroes and the wild spirit of the American West. The story shows how much people still love tales of the Wild West, even today. In the prime of Hollywood in the 1930s, Gary Cooper became a big star, charming audiences with his acting. He played famous roles like a tough lawman in High Noon and an adventurous guy in The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Alongside him, Frances D. also shined in movies like I Walked with a Zombie, showing her talent. Both Cooper and D. stayed focused on their acting, driven by their love for storytelling more than just fame. Cooper's skills got him recognized as one of the best actors in American history by the American Film Institute. Even though many years have gone by, Cooper and Dee's work still matters to people. Their movies are remembered in the history of film. Their influence reminds us of the magic of movies, where talent and hard work make unforgettable moments. Today, when we watch their movies, we see why Gary Cooper and Francis Dee are legends of film. In the realm of entertainment, there are stories of ordinary people who rose to fame through their unique talents and perseverance. One such tale revolves around Bob Burns, Richard Bennett, and Jack Oakey. Bob Burns, inheriting his father's knack for problem solving, embarked on a career defined by attention to detail. Richard Bennett, known for his theater productions, seamlessly transitioned into silent film adaptations with guidance from a mentor. Meanwhile, Jack Oakey's journey from a telephone clerk to a comedic actor began unexpectedly during a Wall Street executive show. Alongside Lulu McConnell and vaudeville, Oki honed his comedic skills, setting the stage for his successful acting career. Together, these individuals, along with others, brought their diverse backgrounds and talents to the cinematic masterpiece, If I Had a Million. Each person's unique perspective and skill set added depth to the narrative, transforming it into an enduring piece of art. Their collective efforts showcased the power of collaboration and determination in the world of cinema. In the classic film, If I Had a Million, we saw some big name actors who made a lasting impact on the movie industry. Gary Cooper, known for his roles in famous cowboy movies, originally wanted to play a character that James Stewart later portrayed in another movie. Besides acting, Cooper was part of a group called the Motion Picture Alliance, which aimed to preserve certain American values in films. Then there's W.C. Fields, a comedian adored by many. In his final film, he finally got to bring to life a character he'd been dreaming about for a long time. These actors left their mark on the film world in their own unique ways. 